Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be making a comprehensive tutorial for GE Tracker. Uh, I've got a lot of questions about this recently, so I thought maybe making a long, full video about it would be useful for some people. Now, before I get started, GE Tracker is a sponsor of mine, and I've never really explained this very much, but I am sponsored not on a per video basis, but sponsored on a referral basis. So there's a referral link in the description, I get paid from referrals, so I don't actually have to make a certain amount of videos or anything about this, but still, it is a paid promotion, so just be aware of that. Okay, so to start off here, uh, the Flip Finder tab is where you're going to be using GE Tracker the most. There's a bunch of different uh, tabs to go through, suggested items, favorite items, GE limits, highest margin, uh, new items, high volume items, and the tag list. So on any of these tabs, you're going to be greeted with a very similar table. It's going to start with the item name, the current price, uh, the approximate offer price and sell price, the approximate profit, your return on your investment, and buying and selling quantities, uh, the buy-sell ratio, and the GE limit. Now, to go over this a little more, the approximate offer price and sell prices are just, I'm still not quite sure how OS Buddy tracks what is a buy and sell price. I've tried quite a few times to ask different people about it. It does work fairly well, it's not 100% accurate. The only way I could imagine it determining what is a buy and what is a sell, because in one transaction, someone's always buying it and selling it. The only way I could imagine it working is if you have an item in a GE and it hasn't sold and someone goes and buys it, uh, insta buys it, that counts as a buy. If someone has a buy offer in a GE and someone goes and insta sells it, that counts as a sell. I'm not sure if OS Buddy can track that, but honestly I have no other clue how it might work. The approximate profit is just based on these two numbers. It should almost always be the difference between these two. The return on your investment is just your approximate profit divided by the current price, uh, which gives you pretty much the right uh, number there. Uh, that is just the ratio on how much money you're getting back based on how much you're investing. Uh, the buying quantity and selling quantity per hour is pretty self-explanatory. That is how many are logged per hour. So there's about uh, 30 logged an hour and it determined that 12 of those are buy offers and 19 of those are sell offers. Uh, the buy sell ratio is uh, just kind of a variant of the ROI and uh, the GE limit is the limit on the GE. Can't really explain that anymore. And this is if you favorited the item or not. So now the main benefit of the suggested item page is that it is a self curated list. It's going to pull items from uh, your favorite or not from your favorite but from the highest margin high volume, G limits, and possibly new items. And it gives you a list of items that most people won't be able to see. If you hit the refresh button, you're gonna get a different list of items. So if we see at the top right now is the Elder Mall. If we refresh it, go ahead and click highest margin. It's gonna be Samurai Boots now. So it's a bit different every time and it is actually useful for finding more unique flips to yourself. Next up is the favorite items tab. However, I'm gonna skip that temporarily just to explain a couple other things first. Now the GE limits tab is mainly useful for figuring out uh, actually how much profit you can get from the item and whether it's worth it based on how much money you're investing. Uh, so right now the way this actually sorts is based on the potential profit. So if you look here at the side, uh, the estimated profit is actually highest for the Amulet of Glory 4, even though the margin is only 122 versus like say the Dragon Pickaxe or something else with a higher margin. The main reason here is it just takes the actual GE limit into account. So yes, you're only getting 122 on each Amulet of Glory, but since the limit is very high for this item, it's 10,000, your potential profit is 1.2 mil. And it also lists the full buy price if you're to buy the entire buying limit here. So it would be 215 mil to buy 10,000 Amulet of Glory 4s. And you can see the profit here would be 1.2 mil. You can even use this to figure out your own return on investment or buying ratio, whatever you want to call it. Once you get a little bit more money, up to like 100 mil, it's a lot more useful to find items that have medium margins but very high limits, like items like this, uh, where you can actually get 1.2 mil profit just from flipping 10,000 of them. It does take a ton of money to do it, but it's very quick. Not so much on the Amulet 4, but on more on the Glory 6 or something like that. Next up, we have the highest margin tab, and this is when you really want to start using your item filters. Uh, so where the item filters are is in this top right corner here. All you have to do is click the button and it's going to bring up a item list here. Actually, it looks like I already had a filter on, so we'll take that off quickly. Uh, so what this does is actually filter items based on a criteria that you put in. You could put in multiple or just one. So let's say you only had 20 mil, or let's say, let's do 10 mil actually. 10 mil. 
So now it's going to filter out any items that cost more than 10 mil. Now there are a bunch of different filters that you can do, but I find the most useful ones is the price maximum as well as filtering these buying quantity and selling quantities. So let's say you don't want to do a super slow item. Uh, you'd go here, come into the filters, if it opens up, there we go. And uh, your selling quantity minimum and buying quantity minimum, let's say you put in five. That's a pretty safe bet and you'll be able to buy at least a couple in one hour. So once we save those filters, it's filtering out anything that doesn't have at least five buying and selling quantity. So now we're looking at the region bracelet. Now you can actually filter items on most of these pages, but I find it most useful on the highest margin page because a lot of people just come here, look at the highest margin, and they'll just put in a blind offer for whatever it is. Okay, the next page here is the new items page. Uh, very useful actually when new items come out because there's a ton that you don't even really think about. But I'm pretty sure it still extrapolates this from the OS Buddy database. Uh, so you should actually get pretty much all the new items in the game. Uh, so this is for the Fossil Island uh, update. There's Wyvern Visage. But if we have a look at some of the random items, uh, like Sully Step Cap, Giant Seaweed, Calcite, Driftnet, Oak Bird House. Like everything's here, even stuff you'd never even know about. Uh, it's very useful, especially when I do my one hour flipping challenges for new content. Because uh, it's hard to actually keep track of all the new items. Now next up, another very useful uh, tab is the High Volume tab. Now this is going to filter out uh, anything that doesn't have at least 5,000 buying or selling quantity. And then it's going to put the highest GP profit item first. So it's going to be filtering based on the potential profit and not anything to do with the limit. Although most of these will have a limit associated with them because they're pretty common flips. And look, I'm, literally almost everyone is there except for the egg. <laughs> I don't know why the egg is here. Get that away. So you have to take all of these high volume items with a grain of salt. You're never going to want to just actually straight up use the margin that shows in GE Tracker because it's in movement so quickly, it's never going to be right. You're better off just looking for the items there and then going and checking the margin. Sometimes it moves around so quickly, it might not even be a good margin, but let's say 380 and uh, we're selling it for 349. That's a really good margin, actually. I'll just do that while I'm making the video. Fuck it. 10k and we'll come back to that later yeah so you can see it's actually really useful for finding uh, high volume items even if the margin is never going to be right uh, you can filter on this item page as well but I don't really find it to be as useful uh, because mainly you're just going to be looking at these top items once it gets into zero uh, they're gonna there's gonna be like a one or two GP margin at that point anyway and the last step here is the item tag list. Now this is just a different way of filtering a bunch of items out. It's very useful for me because I often do uh, items based on category. Uh, but let's say you just want to quickly look at all of the medium clue rewards. There you go, all 104 medium clue rewards. It's useful for other aspects that's not, not even including flipping. Uh, let's say you just want to look at the most valuable item you can get from a medium clue scroll. Ranger boots, wizard boots, holy sandals, then you just can kind of keep looking. Clue rewards should encompass all items, so we can look here at the most expensive clue reward item right now. The Third Age Pickaxe, these ever even trade in the game, I don't know, I've never seen one before. There's only a couple traded every day at most. And they have all the bosses here as well as uh, raids, new PvP things, and it's just kind of a useful thing to have a look through. And now last up is actually the favorited items tab. Now I actually have a completely different use for this tab, and it's not what you'd think. Uh, so if you have a look, let's go back to the highest margin tab for a second here. If you notice, uh, the worst, let's look at the worst margin here. It's actually 2.5. However, this is based on the fact that the buy offer is lower than the sell offer. Occasionally, it gets swapped. And for whatever reason, it's going to show up with a negative number. Now, it's essentially just as, say something has a negative 300k margin. It's still a 300k margin. Just OS Buddy has messed up the numbers. And hence, it's not going to be showing on this highest margin tab. However, if we go to the favorited items tab, you're going to probably have nothing there to begin with. However, if you start favoriting like literally every item you see, like I have, like I have 500 items favorited, I believe. I can notice that there's going to be different margins here that are not going to be showing up on any of these tabs, uh, which is actually extremely useful and I would recommend doing. So let's look at the, uh, let's say the Armadale Hilt. Not going to show up in any of these tabs because technically it has a negative 200k margin which is just, it doesn't matter. And you can see here, maybe we could buy it for 22.6 and sell it for 22.9. Tons of options here, and that's why I would really recommend favoriting a bunch of items uh, to have a look at 
and you can actually make your own list of items that literally nobody else will have access to. The way I do it is normally on the highest margin page, whenever there's some new items here you can just hit add to favorites, easy to do. Uh, hopefully the mods don't kill me and this doesn't crash the website. If so, I may have to change this. Okay, so now we've gone over all of the flip finder tabs. Uh, now we're going to have a look at an actual item. So here is the Zamorak God Sword. Let's look at it. Why not? First item here. So to start off here, you pretty much have all the information that you had on the graph form, except it's just laid out a bit differently. It'll also show you the high alk value, which is kind of nice. Now this is a new feature here. It has a previous price data, so you can see every 10 minutes or I guess 20 minutes in this case, uh, it's going to be updating with what the price was at. Uh, if you leave it open, it'll keep live updating as well. Uh, so to start off here, a new feature that got added to GE Tracker is since OS Buddy will very frequently uh, lag out on GE Tracker, they've added their own price graph that will be as a backup or a contingency if OS Buddy is not working. So this thing here means that uh, we're pulling item directly from the OS Buddy database. Uh, which is generally going to be much more up to date and accurate. However, if there is a GE tracker symbol here, it means the database is down. It's going to be showing you a little more dumbed down, but fairly accurate uh, price graph there. But I wouldn't be taking it as seriously if for some reason the OS Buddy symbol is not here. So we're going to start off with a full on view of the graph here, and this is going to be defaulted onto the month. Uh, so this is going to show you the last month and the average price every day of what the item's at. A very useful feature here is actually these little uh, letters here which are going to show you updates to the game. Uh, so let's see the Zamrat Goddess where it shot up pretty much after the, well, probably this update here maybe. I'm not sure um, why it's actually going up so much. It's hard to tell just based on the update name. Uh, but it probably has something to do with the uh, other God Sword getting changed. The Bandos God Sword spec is getting reduced to 50% or at least is pulled to have that happen. Okay, to start off here, you're going to make sure you have the split graph feature turned on. You can't really notice it so much here, but if you go down to say the week here and you have the split graph off, you can see it's only going to show you an average between the buys and sell offers. So that's why you're going to always want to have it on. Uh, if you go down here to the day graph, it's going to show you even more uh, a difference between what the buy and sell offers are at. So one other feature that's really useful is the 10 minute graph. If, under the options here, it's either going to say 10 minute or 30 minute. And that's going to be based on what you have turned on. 30 minute graph is going to show you less intervals, uh, but I find this a little bit less buggy. However, if you turn it to the 10 minute graph, it's going to show you updates every 10 minutes if there are them, uh, which is going to be a little bit more accurate, but it's really not necessary to have on. I just kind of like it. Now, of course, over here, you have the different time frames you can look at. The most recent data you can look at is on the day graph. It's going to show you 24 hours. A week is going to show you uh, a week. <laughs> a month is going to show you a month. A quarter is going to be three months, I believe. And a year is going to be a full year, which is good for looking at historical prices of items and can be useful for future predictions. If you scroll down a little bit, now you can see the amount traded per day, which is extremely useful. So if you have it set to the month, each one of these data points is going to be a day. So it's pretty useful to have it on the month because you can see how many are traded on average in a day. And uh, so let's say Zamrak God Swords have about 400 uh, traded a day. These got 400 here, 360. You can see how many on average there are. Uh, if you go down to the day graph, it's gonna show you much more accurately in the last hour even. So you can see uh, between 11 and 11.30, there's about three bought and three sold. Back a little further is 19. And you can see pretty much exactly how much you could expect to buy and sell in an hour, which is especially useful for me when I'm doing my one hour buying challenges. If you come down here a little bit further, these are just different things you can set up. Uh, for one, price alerts, which I've messed around with a little bit here. You can set alerts for when a certain data point goes below or above a certain point and you can get an SMS text or an email. Uh, so let's say, I'm not going to get a text for this, but let's say you want the profit margin when it's above 100k. Uh, you can, or we'll do numbers, 100,000. Uh, send me an email when that happens and it does. Uh, however, of course, it's going to only alert you uh, once the actual data has updated. So you might not always get your email right on time. I'd say the most important thing to take away from this is to make sure you're using the day graph. Uh, set it to 10 minutes if you want and make sure you have the split graph feature on and you're looking at the buying and selling quantities. Okay, and one last thing to mention around flip finding is going to be actually in your account settings. If you come over here to account settings, uh, you'll actually be able to flip on a free to play mode. If you're for whatever reason, you're only wanting to look at say free to play items, there's actually a button 
in here that will switch it over to free to play for you. So it's just going to be right here at the bottom here and you're just going to tick it on if you want to only see free to play items. It's going to work for almost all of the flipping tabs however it won't work for your favorite items. Uh, but it'll work for highest margin, high volume, as well as for some of the money making tabs I believe it works as well. Okay, so speaking of that, we have a huge other section here which is money making. There's a ton of different things here. Uh, we're going to be speeding through these ones a little bit more. So let's start here with the high alchemy. Pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to be finding margins between buy offers and the high alt price. It's a little bit of a crapshoot. I would focus more on finding uh, break even items that net you experience more so than trying to alk for profit. However, you can occasionally find really hilarious items that you can get like a 10k margin on. So what you're kind of looking for more here is if you're scrolling through the pages, you're looking for something with a GE limit higher than 70 because 70 Alex is going to take like three minutes. So you're really going to want something with a higher buying quantity and air battle subs is look here. Theoretically, you could be netting 13 GP on each one, uh, which mainly it just is that you're breaking even and it has a buying limit of 14,000. Fire battle salves here as well, 3,000. And uh, I would keep looking a little further and you might find even some more useful items. Next up is the potion decanter tool. And the one thing I don't really find too useful about this tool is the fact that it seems to uh, sort based on the cheapest dose. However, the cheapest dose is usually not a great idea. So buying anti-fire potion ones are going to take like forever. You're almost always going to want to buy uh, dose threes. Now I'm not really sure if there's a way to change that. But I don't see any way to do it. So really what you're going to want to do here is just use dose threes to decant potions. But there is still some uses here. For one, it does actually show you dose threes. And it just gives you a list of full potions here and what the margins could be. And usually uh, they are somewhat tied together between the different doses. So it can, can be worth to actually go ahead and look at the margins for these items. If you have no clue what I'm talking about here, I'll leave a link in the description for a tutorial for this. Next up here we have a Herb Lord Profit tab. Now I find the most useful tool here is the Unfinished Potion because that is generally the most ideal way to make profit from Herb Lore. You're not getting any experience here but this is basically turning uh, herbs with a vial into an Unfinished Potion. Uh, you can look here for the most expensive potion here. It looks like Unfinished Snapdragons are at the time. Pretty useful and uh, time saving to actually just look at this tool instead of checking them all yourself. However you definitely can just do that as well. Next up on the Herbal thing you have making potions. Now this isn't really for profit, but you can see which potions cost the least to make. And it can kind of help you determine how you want to train Herbal uh, Also you have a clean herbs thing, but I would never recommend clean herbs. It's just a pain in the ass. It's not worth it. Now next up is probably the most important tool in this money making section. And it's really more of a flipping tool. And that is the item sets and crafting page. Now the, what this does is it pulls most items in the game that can be transformed into other items based on crafting, based on making sets, or any any item that you can change quickly into another one. So let's say this item here, the Ancestral Robe set. If you went ahead and bought all the individual pieces and combined them to a set, you could potentially make 1.5 mil off this item. Uh, if you scroll down here more, the Malediction Ward can be created with three shard pieces in a volcano somewhere. Primordial Boots can be created with level 555 rune crafting. If you use a uh, Primordial Crystal on a Dragon Boot, uh, crafting amulets of fury and it just kind of keeps going and shows you a ton of different item combinations It's even to show you uh, repairing barrows items which you buy Guthans helm zero and you repair it into a Guthans helm netting you 85k this is probably the most useful tab in the money making section by far so next up is the barrows repair tab essentially what this is uh, is a tool that shows you the differences between a completely used up Guthans helm zero and the Guthans helm Right now that's probably a 150k difference or something like that. Because it costs like 60 to 100k to repair items, it shows you the approximate profit after the repair uh, so you don't even have to calculate anything. Up here you can select if you're using an armor stand or using an NPC. If you select NPC it's going to show you a different price. If you're using an armor stand you can pop in your RSN or I think you can just put in a number. Next up we have a more of a convenience tab here which is the magic tablets. Uh, which basically just shows you the most profitable tablet to make at the moment, uh, which is pretty useful just to quickly look at before you go ahead and uh, check every single tablet yourself. So it looks like the Lumbridge Teleport is giving you the highest profit right now, and it also shows you a buying and selling quantity, which is kind of nice. Next up, we have a tan leather thing, another pretty convenience tab here, but you can also select a tan leather lunar option here, which will give you a more accurate breakdown of if you're using the lunar spellbook to tan all the hides. Next up we have a plank making tab which you can either select 
uh, making planks from a sawmill or using the lunar spellbook again very similar but still useful to see what the potential profit is and uh, this tab is probably the least useful <laughs> the nightmare zone reward point it's pretty obvious which one you actually want to uh, pick the profit per points is one and anything else is less than 0.2 pretty well and that's pretty much it for all of the tools that GE Tracker has to offer. Uh, now, I'm not really going to go over the Profit Tracker here because it's not really anything to help you actually flip better. It's more of just to keep track of your profits, obviously. Now, the last feature of GE Tracker I want to go over is the Merchantine Logs section. It's under the Leaderboard tab here. It's very useful for looking at what other people are flipping. Uh, all you have to do is click on View Merch Log, and it's going to show you uh, exactly what items they flipped, the quantity, and the profit they got. On top of that, it'll show you the date as well as the progress here. It's a really good tool for looking at what items are actually working and what other people are doing to actually make profit from flipping. Alright guys, that is pretty much it. I know this is a long video, but I had a ton of questions regarding GE Tracker recently, and I thought it would be useful to just go over the entire thing. So thanks for watching all the way through if you did, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to toss the video a like, and I will see you in the next video.